If you haven't seen the show already, you can leave. Get out! Like, I'm not joking, this show is fantastic and it's impossible to talk about without spoilers. It's easily a must-watch of the year, and if you have any respect for my opinion, you will drop everything and go check it out. Though I do have one caveat, and this is the only thing I'll talk about before moving to spoilers. As people have asked, do you have to watch Scott Pilgrim the movie or read the comics before watching the show? Yeah. Leave your disagreements at the door, but I think anyone can watch this show and like it, but you won't be able to truly appreciate it without having at least seen the movie first. Like, bare minimum. That is the required reading. But that shit's on Netflix and under two hours, so you got the time, go check it out, then go back and watch the show. As this thing isn't what you think it is. And that Netflix marketing is sketchy as hell as they did not tell us what we were in for. But it's amazing, the movie is fun, the comic is better, but there's an argument to be made that this show is the best one out of the bunch. And you just gotta experience it to believe it. Like right now, go. But for everyone else, let's talk about spoilers. I warned you! I... One? I won! Oh my god, I love this show so much. Like, I was dying for this thing all year, and it was nothing like I expected, but I adored everything about Scott Pilgrim Takes Off, aka Ramona Flowers vs. The World, aka Scott Pilgrim vs. The World Unlimited Blay Works, aka Rip Bozo, Rip the Friend Group, Matthew Battelle, and X Supremacy. Like truly, this show was an experience. Some would say it was my everything. I'm a long time fan of this story, for mostly the right reasons. Watching Scott's dumbass finally come of age in his early 20s was a story that I feel like is sorely missing in our media. You either get your shit together when you're a kid, or you get your shit together in high school or college. But no one ever talks about that point after the fact, because we're all broke, we don't have money, so they don't really make stories catering to us. But after I saw the movie, I read the comic, and I loved it. Yes, he did date a high schooler. It was weird. But truly, I fell in love with this world and the characters, as it just dripped in all the nostalgic nerd core of my youth. So naturally, I was so excited that it was finally getting an animated adaptation, only for the series to start, and immediately throw me by skimming stuff that I knew was going to be important later. Like, they really need to sell that Scott is a loser, that he was dating knives, a 17 year old when he's 23. They need to establish a kiss. All this stuff that they were just blowing past, I thought, okay, okay, they'll get back to it. This, this can't be a red flag. Only for Scott to die in the first episode. Like, I was shocked, intrigued, and horrified as I realized that this wasn't the comics, and some people were not gonna handle that well. As the marketing just did not prepare us for this. Though, to be fair, I only skimmed the trailers. Didn't you read my letter? Kind of. But by the end of episode 2, I was fully on board with this thing, as it was obvious that while it wasn't the show I expected, I was digging what it was doing. As rather than retelling the same story for the third time, Takeoff is instead a DLC or reimagining in the best kind of way. The series pulled in unlimited blade works, giving us a chance to explore the characters that didn't get as much time to shine in the original series, while also taking out Scott and recentering it around Ramona as the true protagonist. If Vs. the World is about Scott maturing as a person and coming to terms with just the worst parts of himself, then this is Ramona's chance to do the same. As Ramona, she always had baggage, but while she does kinda deal with her issues, her struggles are more on the periphery of things. Her habit of running away from all her problems feels like a ticking time bomb rather than something that the series really ever sits down and fully unpacks. Here though, she is front and center. Her issues and her relationships with her exes all get to take center stage, as they aren't just people for Scott to defeat anymore. Instead, we get to delve a lot more into how Ramona feels about them to watch her mature and reflect on her mistakes and the places they stumbled into her life again. We watch her figure out who she thinks is worth fighting for, who she thinks is worth staying in touch with, and those she can just live with them just being here. This isn't a full apology tour for all of her actions or theirs, but it feels like they took the neglected parts of the story and just fleshed them out and everyone hugely benefits from this. Ramona is fantastic as a lead, I honestly love her way more in this than Scott, who love him or hate him. He stumbles through the story in his own lovable way, but her chill energy vibes really well with all the crazy people she's usually interacting with. And not to mention how this series, despite being partially inspired by the movies, is able to pull Ramona out of the depths of stoicism, as 
I love that movie, I really do, but they played her way too animatically. But that more dives into how she wasn't Endgame in that film. No, the writers thought they could hook up Scott with the high schooler, but then the test audience said nah, so Ramona and Scott became Endgame again. Truly, this series does such wonders for Ramona. I love her, it is at Scott's expense, but honestly, I am fully okay with that for reasons I'm about to get into. But the other biggest beneficiary of this shift in focus is the exes themselves, who move from standard antagonists to way more just well-rounded characters, which they were fine in the original, but I think what they do here weirdly works super well. And it kind of feels crazy that they didn't do this from the start, as in a series all about giving a fuck up grace and the chance to be better, extending that same idea to the evil exes feels so natural that it honestly feels shocking that it didn't happen already. Before I jump into seeing all their praises, I do think it's also fair to address the complications and shafting that this shift in focus also creates. Firstly, Scott. We'll actually wait to talk about him, but the rest of the supporting cast. They, and not to sugarcoat it. Once upon a time, a man got fucked. Like, truly, one of the biggest pauses about reading the comic is how it just is able to give a more holistic look on who Scott actually is, and how his behavior affected all those around him. In the movie, it's Kim's, but in the comics, characters like Kim, Knives, and Envy all get so much love and closure versus their movie counterparts. They all feel like their own characters rather than kind of one-note jokes to fill space in Scott's world. If you want to example this, even Stefan has his own little arc about coming out and reorganizing his friend group. The comic gave everyone so much time to be more, but this show, for all the love certain characters get, a lot of the other ones, there wasn't enough left. Envy is still just the rich bitch pop star who dated Scott, and not the complicated woman who got pushed away and wasn't handling the breakup well either. So if you're looking for redemption or like to have these character stories told, I kinda don't know what to tell you as it's not really there. You're really just gonna have to stay mad or accept it, cause outside of doing Kim, Marge better than the movie, but not as well as the comic, most of the supporting cast... A man got fucked. And here's the thing, I'm fine with that. As yeah, this was a little bit distracting as I'm watching, like, are they gonna do this, are they gonna do that, only for them to not to. But watching this series for what it is, realizing who it's giving more love and attention to, I can accept it. As yeah, it would have been nice to see an animated retelling of their full story. But the truth is, those stories have already been told. You can read the comic, it's great. But this isn't their story anymore. So while it's a bit bitter, I think it was the right call to make. To reshuffle the spotlight and to give characters who had less, more time to shine. Everyone is still here and being given stuff to do, but it's less than some people might have wanted. In some cases, you can be a little bit salty like Envy, but then you have weird cases like Knives, where we get to sidestep Scott dating a 17-year-old high schooler when he's 23, which fits his man-child never grew up mentality. But from every other angle, it's yikes. But Knives, after his death, is given her own subplot about her flourishing, learning that she loves music, playing in the band, working with Stefan to write and create a musical. And it's cool to watch her character grow without having to obsess over Scott. But while great and unique in its own way, it's still less than what she was given in the comic, and she is not as much of an active participant as you might expect. She is very much in the background, but given the context of the story, I think that's okay. But that is something that I feel like unless you can accept it and you realize what this show is doing, it will be a little bit greater. I know it bugged me a little bit in places, but in hindsight, I get it. I understand. Rip, Lisa Miller, you will one day be in one of these adaptations. Oh, also, of course, gotta praise the visuals of this thing. This whole show is a feast for the eyes. It is consistently over the top and crazy, but then it's able to flip to suddenly being intimate and homey. This show can do it all, and it was able to do so without abusing its staff. I hope. I love the show, rather than just blurring out the out of focus parts of a shot, will go the extra mile of just overlapping the same visual to create the same effect. And this extra mile just gives this show such a great sense of identity. This could have just been the comics. It could have been animated any certain way, but as soon as it looked like the thing, no one would complain. But this anime, this cartoon, whatever you want to call it, it looks great. It is its own unique thing. And every second that I'm watching it, I am never bored. The soundtrack is full of bops, nothing that I'm like, I need to rewatch and play that scene in my head again type music, but they are so many moments that are just iconic. And you, come on, you guys know the one. Takes Off was everything I wanted when I think Scott Pilgrim anime. As the fights hit hard, the chases are a roller coaster where Rule of Cool is king. I hope everyone got paid properly and the whole production was done ethically, as nobody 
slacked on this thing, and they all deserved full respect and their paycheck. Shout out to the shots of Ramona changing her hair every morning, and of course Gideon's lair. I don't know why, but those ones just, they spoke to me somehow. But to move on to more story related stuff, let's talk exes. As in a show where Scott's dead, Ramona told them to fuck off, it really created a fascinating space where we get to see these butthurt dorks without an obvious goal. Where the obvious comes true, as these guys were just here to fuck up Scott originally. Roxy had more going on, but we don't talk about that. But for them, they were just here to be dicks. But I feel like what this show really handled well is that they really made clear that outside of having an active goal, they, just like Scott, are all their own worst enemies. This is something that I adored reading in the comics, but I think the series does an even better job of highlighting how every one of these people are all immature pricks trapped in their 20s. They were all just hanging onto a girl from their past. And while it seemed like they were doing okay outside of that, we actually get a better look at them and how if they hadn't died, their choices will have caught up to them sooner rather than later. Or in some cases, if they weren't obsessing over Ramona, they'd be able to flourish. Like for example, Lucas Lee, who is basically the version from the movie. He's very much the smug jackass who believes his bad boy hype. We get to see him riding high on the good life, only for his career to hit a slump that forces him to start getting his act together. We watch Lucas take his job more seriously, while also highlighting how, for him personally, he may not be happy about how things ended with Ramona. He has way more animosity towards Todd than he ever shows to her. Lucas, outside of Scott, was willing to let sleeping dogs lie and to just try and move on with his life. And for that, we were able to watch him drop a lot of that fake bravado, and you watch him find a smaller but more fulfilling career as a barista. We watch this man grow and change, and this is all out of a character that was very much just here to die. And that is applied to pretty much everyone. Like Roxy, easily best episode of the series, as it's here that really forces Ramona to own up to her actions, that she did a shitty thing in breaking with Roxy by just leaving without saying goodbye, something that, while not fully stated in the comic or film, does track with how Ramona just referred to the whole relationship as just a phase that she was going through, which is very dismissive and a little fucked, especially when you see how much it meant to Roxy. I honestly think that the fight and their reconciliation was too good for how early it was in the series, as none of Ramona's moments with the the others hit nearly as hard. Though the surprise Kim Yuri was nice. No sparks. Eh, worth a shot. Honestly, I would have loved for Roxy to stick around longer, but everything that had to do with her was a highlight, so maybe it would have been better that they just kept it light rather than overindulge. This whole episode is a highlight for me and really does solidify to me that this is Ramona's story and why that it is something of value to see her confront her exes and to actually grow from the experience alongside them rather than against them. Though I will not lie, not all the shenanigans on the movie set hit for me. Like Lucas, pretty solid, not the tearjerker, but it is very fitting. But the stuff with Todd and Envy, there's a critical mass point where the story is fun. This this story is never boring, but it doesn't have that same emotional catharsis that we got here. As the mechanics of what happened to Scott and Ramona figure out like who, what, and why does tamper what I think is the strongest hook of the series, which is Ramona meeting her exes again and maturing from it. I think maybe this is just my bias says, I kinda don't care for the Todd stuff. Like, it is so funny that Todd hooks up with Wallace, that he leaves Envy, resulting in Ramona having to be the adult in the room and realize just being direct gets her results way faster than all these other hoops she was jumping through. But Todd's episode is just it's a bit of a hitch, as it does make Envy the third wheel to shenanigans while not giving Todd the same glow up that all of the other exes got. Everyone else kind of has sympathy, relatability, even fucking Gideon you're made to feel a little bit bad for. But Todd, he's still just the same idiotic douche who thinks he can do whatever he wants, only this time he felt an emotional connection rather than a physical one. I do think tracks for a guy who just consistently is head empty and uses acts of service to make up for the fact that he really doesn't actually care. And on one hand, I do think that works, overall. As Todd, unlike Lucas or Roxy, doesn't have the same emotional depth to his breakup with Ramona. They just kind of dated in high school, were assholes together, and then they broke up when they went to college. Not to mention Todd is more of a foil for Scott, as he is also kind of the worst. So while this whole scene is very fun, doesn't have the same spectacle as what Lucas did, I wouldn't call it bad, it just didn't wow me like the rest of the show. Todd is just a fun prick, Wallace, he's Wallace. But Todd again got caught cheating, but the difference this time is that he caught feelings. Though I feel way better about how they handled Todd than what they did with Gideon. As Gideon, well, they may have downplayed some of his worst aspects just a little bit too much. Who gets the full backstory, and he starts dating Julie, which honestly, 
of them being terrible together, I could ship it. But what kind of drives me crazy in my one critique of like how they end Ramona's arc, where they do this. I'm done running. Like, here's my deal. That is a pattern in Ramona's life to avoid all of her problems and to run away. But putting all the emphasis on her relationship with her evil exes does feel a little weird to me. As if you know the story, her running away from her feelings and just being overall dismissive of other people. Yeah, that kind of tracks for most of them. But then you have Todd, who she just breaks up with normally. The twins were petty revenge on both sides. But then you have Gideon, who was an abusive piece of shit. Like, Ramona learns the right lesson, but putting Gideon in that conversation is just... Yeah, no. Gideon's endgame was to turn Ramona into a sex slave. A frozen sexy lamp that he could date at his convenience. I'm on board with Lucas and Gideon being stupid together, dating Julie, and all the fun dumb stuff that involves the exes just being together. But Gideon's nonsense is just so heinous that it gives me a little bit of pause that we're just like, just completely going past that. Like, this show is great. I think it handles mostly everything well. That's a one framing device where Knowing the context, it does have me throwing just a little bit of side eye. But when it's just being unserious fun, it's the best. And that unseriousness allows the serious moments to stand out all the more. I just wish some stuff wasn't downplayed. But I also don't know how you'd address Gideon being the massive piece of shit that he was without just completely restructuring his entire role in the story. Ramona letting Julie date Lucas, yeah, that's fine. Dating Gideon feels like it would involve an intervention. Though I do love the extra lore of how Gideon was always an unaware loser. Only difference, he got money, and that's what made him dangerous. But once he loses that, he's back to being just a little bit more manageable. But of course, we can't talk about the show without giving just a massive round of applause to the glow up that was Matthew Battelle. Dude literally shows up just to get beaten, only for him to think he won. Beat Gideon, take his company, his look, and pursue his dreams of performing on stage. He's not pivotal or like really important to the story, but this whole situation feels like a massive apology just to how little we actually saw of him in the original. Dude went from a nobody to a highlight, and I just love seeing me an underdog story. Especially when he gets a call at how dumb the League's actual plan is, of how they would kill Ramona's boyfriend and she would just somehow magically date them. These dudes did not think it through, and it shows. Meaning the time we spend with them trying to take that next step in their lives just all the better. Also, the twins. I honestly thought they were gonna do something with them this time around, but it's almost a meme how they are just perpetually in the background. They are never like the thing that is important in their scenes. They're here to set up something else, and what they do, they're good at it. Also, I think I've been avoiding this subject enough, but Scott didn't actually die. No, instead he was kidnapped by the series' real big bad, Scott Pilgrim, but older. Now this is the thing that really makes me love, hate, and dread people's reaction to the series. As some people, they're gonna take this personally and hate how the series was re-centered around Ramona while also making a villainous version of Scott. But I personally love the idea that at some point in the future, Ramona and Scott backslid into old habits and their relationship suffered because of it. That Scott would go back to being a full man-child again and would do something excessively stupid like try to change the timeline rather than deal with his emotions. I love the idea that after they got married, and then they seemed like they were divorced, Scott would truly become Ramona's worst evil ex, as his tunnel vision on his own well-being blinds him to the consequences of his actions, with him insisting that he's not the problem through all of it. But while I appreciate the vision of this, this is one of those things that make me think like, low-key, you need to read the comics to fully get this series, as we aren't really around Scott enough to really see this idea, and the movie doesn't do nearly enough with it as well. But it is an integral part of the story, and you only get the context of it if you read the comics. So while the finale is amazing, that final battle is great. This as a whole leaves me with a very complicated take on the series, as I love this thing. But I've also done the required reading, so when I look at something like this that wasn't billed as a sequel, I wonder how somebody who just hasn't seen the movie or comics is gonna react to it. And while for the most part I think if you've seen the movie you're gonna be fine, the comics in this case just feels like it's essential reading to fully appreciate what it's going for, what it's doing with future Scott, what it's done with all these characters, and why it's fully okay to just sidestep some of the baggage that was initially set up. The finale to the series is amazing. Ramona meets herself and is able to accept her past, present, and future. That she did have a problem of running away, and that she, despite all that, still wants to stay and fight for Scott. That this is something that she's come to her own conclusion about, and that she was able to make amends with so many people in her life. That she gets to choose who she will be, and even though she knows what this could end up being, she's still gonna stick around and find out. Scott may be the titular character of the series, and while he may 
not begin like the full lesson I think he needs. Having him fight a broke evil ex version of himself is very fitting and I think that's the kind of scare that really works for the story that this show is telling. I don't want to go into any real conspiracy theory nonsense about this retconning the comic or the movie that Ramon and Scott broke up because of this series. Like just remember, multiverse is a bitch. And in this one they got the bad ending as they just made the wrong decisions. But Scott Pilgrim takes off. Despite not being the series that I expected, I absolutely adored it. It's the perfect addition to the Scott Pilgrim like franchise and serves as a fun new take on a story that I know and love, providing a whole new world of opportunities and moments for characters that I didn't know desperately needed them. While I will always love the comics and the movie, Scott Pilgrim takes off, it just hits different, and is a masterclass in re-examining a familiar story. If you're a fan of Scott Pilgrim, I think you're gonna love this. If you're new, you're gonna be a little confused, but you'll like it. I know some people will be mad that the series isn't about Scott, which, fair, if you're expecting something else, but for what it is, it's amazing. I just wrapped this up with some stray thoughts that didn't make into the video. Okay, not gonna lie, out of all the characters to get bumped up in screen time, Wallace and Julie do feel like the characters that they're just mostly here because they were standouts in the film, with Kieran Culkin and Aubrey Plaza just hitting that sweet spot of being famous and affordable. Chris Evans is in his hoe phase of his career, so we don't count that. Also, I would pay so much money to see a Scott Pilgrim's Heaven's Feel version. We do another retake of the series, but this time make Knives the main character have a darker examination of her relationship with Scott, maybe put in the context of him selling for her after not getting Ramona, and she grows up to realize just the whole situation was kind of fucked. Apparently a 23 year old dating a high schooler is frowned upon by society. No shit! I adore how they foreshadowed Scott and the older Scott by having first time he and Scott and Ramona talked, having him bring up the fact that there's two different Sonic cartoons running at the same time. It's just a fun way to take a nonsense factoid and make you do a double take once you realize just where they were going with this. Even like each other? Because sometimes it feels like they hate each other. This is season 12. This joke, it sent me. Like you have no idea as this is so many anime that I used to grow up with. And I know we got that stinger at the end, but genuinely, genuinely, while I love these characters and I love this story, we don't need a season two. Story's done, we're good. Sure, spin-off potential, but I am satisfied, let it die. That said, I will take three more seasons of Fiona and Cake. Yeah, I'm a hypocrite, but I think I'm right.